that music can only mean one thing. It's the return of the exclusive film and video report. Joining me this week, it's uh, James Rana, WFDU-FM's very own James Rana. Hey, Ghosty. Thank you very much for having me back. It's time for me to talk about a film that you haven't seen. I haven't seen right. this one. <laughs> this is... Uh, we'll talk about two movies that I saw recently. Uh, let, let, me, let me preface this by saying I go to the movies infrequently. Uh. <laughs> I go with my mother, and it's our day out. It happens once a month. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we, we go to the movies because that's what we've always done. You know, she used to take me to the movies as a kid. And even now, at this venerable age, my mother pays for the films. But the movie she chooses, I remember a girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> right, right. Well, that, see, we didn't know. We didn't know that that was not a Christmas movie. No, it was. You guys right. went on see, Christmas. I remember. Wait, that. Christmas Day, we went to go see the girl with the dragon tattoo. How violent can that be? The first, the first rape scene was, I think, when I, I said to my mother, Eh, uh, Merry Christmas, Mom. <laughs> not, not the best idea. So recently we uh -huh. saw, and actually she, she gave me a choice between a horror movie that had come out and a, and a comedy. All right. So uh, we went to go see The Three Stooges, which uh, was a, a Ferrelli Brothers movie. Yeah. So they have a pretty decent track record, you know. They, they do. I, di I didn't have high hopes for this because whenever there's some sort of reboot of the Little Rascals, you know, oh, they made a Little yeah. Rascals Dennis movie. Dennis the Menace. They did a reboot of Laurel and Hardy with Owen Meany and Bronson Pinchot, yeah, which horrible. was awful. Oh, yeah, that was awful. pretty bad. So you have uh, Sean Hayes as Larry Fine, Will Sasso, who evidently is from Mad TV, Mad which I've TV, he never lost watched. a lot of weight, and then people did not know what to do with him. So then he gained it all back to play Curly. Yeah. And someone I've never heard of called Chris... Uh, I can't pronounce his Chris name. Chris Diamantopoulos. Diamantopoulos. Now, I think he... Didn't he play Robin Williams in the uh, Mork and Mindy TV movie, if I'm not mistaken? Was there a Mork and Mindy TV movie? There was. Remember they were... Well, they were doing about... Like, those movies about what was going on. They did oh, about, oh, yes. Yeah, they did a Brady Bunch they one behind the, company, behind the scenes. behind the scenes. Return yeah. to the Batcave. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, he actually played... Um, well, I will say, of the three, he was the best. Okay, that's good. His mo was a dead-on impersonation. Now, once again, as we know, I haven't seen this movie, but I remember early on with the Farrelly brothers, the casting list, because like a year and a half ago, it was supposed to be Sean Penn and Benicio Del Toro. Which would have been awful. <laughs> and I think awful. they realized that when they read the script, because they didn't... I cannot imagine Sean... Although it would have been funny because Sean Penn is one of those guys who gets so into character yeah. on and off. So who would he play, Larry? I think it was he so was he be would Larry. have to be Larry all the time, which would be sort of funny. Off, offset. But here's the thing. A lot of people, especially Three Stooges fans, were furious about this movie and railed about it. It is a kid's movie. I mean, it is aimed at maybe six-year-old, five-year-old viewers. But the question is, are they going to see this movie when they go see a cartoon? Yes. It is like a cartoon. It is, with the exception of the Kate Upton scene, which we've all seen in the trailer, where she's in the, the nun bikini, which, which, which is, is not in the movie. It's not in the movie. Are you kidding me? That scene is not in the film. Well, that must have been deleted, but they decided, let's yeah. try to get people to buy tickets. Right, we'll throw it in the in the commercial. Oh, that's interesting. Because I, I, I keep myself abreast of what Kate Upton is doing at all <laughs> times. That scene is not in the film. Well, yeah, but the thing is, these remakes don't always work. You know, I interviewed the, the British director, Jonathan Lynn. He did, right. you know, My Cousin Vinny, but he got hired by the big studio to do Sergeant Bilko with Steve Martin. Right. And he said, first of all, he's like, yeah, he's like, it was an American series I got as a kid in England, but it was like... In the 90s, no one knew this character. No one knew the right. series, and the movie was a huge failure. And he said that was just bad choice from the studio. Well, but see, the difference with the Three Stooges is I think people still know them. I don't, I don't think that they're out of the public's consciousness, the Three Stooges. I mean, if you were to walk into uh, Best Buy or um, Target or something yeah. and go to the DVD section, there are always... Three Stooges. The Three Stooges movies are always in print. They're always on DVD, and they have that reputation of being like a guys thing. Like guys love sports and the Three Stooges. You know, like uh -huh. they've they've achieved that level. Something that a far superior comedy team have not done, which is Laurel and Hardy. Th that is true. for years. Laurel and Hardy shorts were not available. The Hal Roach Studio shorts that we all know and loved, we watched as a kid, until very recently, haven't been on DVD. So I would love to see, but Laurel and Hardy is a different type of humor. It's a gentler humor. It's a more cerebral humor. It really is, actually. Oh, it is. And Three Stooges is pure 
physical slapstick, but it's done in such a way that it's almost there's almost a kind of grace to it, you know? I, I was always taken by the fact that it's really Mo Howard who's a genius, the genius mind behind the Three Stooges, because even though they made the studio a lot, was it Columbia? They were yes. Cl they made Columbia a lot of money, but Columbia never treated them with respect. No. So what they were told was, we're about to demolish this set from a movie, you have three days to use it. So Mo and the writers would create, all right, what's the story? So that's why the Three Stooges always span through time. Right. So sometimes they'll be in a castle. Right. Or, or it'd be the Civil War period. Yeah. Or, right. It's, it's like, this is what we were given. We have to make something. And, and you know, a lot of people don't like Shemp and they prefer Curly. I, I love Shemp. Shemp is fine. I, th I actually think Shemp was better off on his own yes. doing Abbott and Costello movies or in his, he had his own Joe Palooka. series, his Joe Palooka stuff. I think he really excelled there. I think the problem with Shemp is the fact that he followed Curly. And I, people don't realize that Shemp was part of the act before Curly. And this is brother. <laughs> right, and, and they're brothers. You, I mean, you can tell looking at Moe and Shemp that they're brothers, because obviously they look pretty much exactly alike. But, um, but, but Curly made such an impression, the fact that he wasn't a theater kid. Yeah. Obviously Moe was, Larry was, Shemp was. They'd all done vaudeville. Mm -hmm. all, it was in their blood. Curly was not. Curly would watch the act. He didn't really participate. And then when they brought him in, it turned out, he became the most popular stooge, probably because he was untrained and just went on gut, went on instinct and was just hysterical. And then after Shemp came into, uh, you know, there is a short actually with both Curly and Shemp in it where Curly had had his stroke and then he comes back and makes a cameo in a Shemp short, which is very sweet. Um, I prefer if you see the Abbott and Costello Africa Screams. Yes. Which includes Shem, Shem and Joe Besser. And Joe Besser. <laughs> who was great. Who, right. Another one who made the Abbott and Costello crossover because Joe Besser later became a stooge. Yeah. As because, a, he did that as a favor. Right. And and more or less because he physically resembled Curly. Yeah. And also he had his own character. That's his stinky character that he did on the Abbott and Costello <laughs> show. And then after that, you got Curly Joe Dorita, who... Yeah, much younger. Much younger. Not... <sighs> I, I liked, Again, resembled Curly, yeah, but more like a Larry, like a fat version of Larry, just to, just taking the punishment <laughs> you really needed in that dynamic. And we're talking about this as if it's you know Shakespeare. Well, it, it in, is in in that yeah. dynamic. You need Mo as a, as a sadist, right? Yeah. You need Larry as the guy who takes punishment, who's sort of this this emollient between Mo, who's all about control, right? Uh -huh. Mo's always slapping, hey, get over there, do this. He's always barking orders. And then you have Curly, who's just nuts. <laughs> Curly is just insane. So there's no taming Curly. There's no controlling Curly. But when you have, uh, when you have Joe Dorita in there as Curly Joe Dorita, no disrespect, it, it just wasn't the same. And even Larry said that once Curly had his uh, series of strokes and passed away, that the act really suffered. I mean, they continued, but it just it just suffered. But I'll, I'll say this, and I know you want to say something. <laughs> I'll say this. I am glad they did because they had that revival in the 50s when television came along and oh, they were looking course. to buy all those old shorts to fill up programming time. And the Three Stooges had this wonderful revival. So it was great for them because Columbia Studios didn't treat them all that great. It was great for them later on to finally earn some decent money doing this and finally get the accolades that they didn't get from the studio. So it has a happy ending. It, it, uh, you know, but get, getting back to this movie, I have a question for you having seen it. Larry David. Yes, yes. Uh, like any male actor who plays a nun, and there are a lot of them, Yeah. the first few seconds on screen, that's the joke. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's just not as funny anymore. Like once you get past... The idea of like, oh, it's a man playing a nun, uh -huh. then it's it's no longer funny. That's that's kind of how that was like. Uh, it's great that he did it. You know, it's that's a fun thing. Jane Lynch, from, you know, who's now very popular on Glee. You know, they're just trying to get familiar yes, faces. Yes, yes. Jane Lynch, uh, anybody could play that role. Really. Kate Upton, of course. Kate Upton, anybody could have played that role. Well, um, <laughs> well maybe not anybody, but um, it was really focused on the uh, on the. Oh, you know who else is in it? Is uh, Stephen Collins. It's played, always good to see Stephen right, Collins. Right, Stephen Collins, who was, what was the show he was on? on Seventh WB? Heaven with Jessica Seventh Heaven. Prior to that, I know him better as Commander Decker from Star Trek The Motion Picture. Well, I, I knew him as the young villain in the movie uh, Brewster's Millions with Richard Pryor. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. 
So he was in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, and it was one of those things where he came on screen, and I thought that guy looks familiar, but I can't. And towards the end, I yeah. was like, "That's it, Will Decker from Star Trek: The Motion Picture." He also writes romance novels. Oh, jeez, it's creepy. All right, we're, All right. we're going way over. <laughs> we're going way. Listen, <laughs> we're going to wrap up the exclusive movie. I was going to talk about something else. We'll save you, it. For you had another, another time. movie with yeah. We'll save it for another time because this, this is just this is just turned into a, a marathon <laughs> yak fest about the Three Stooges. But anyway, there you go. The exclusive film and video report.